Hello, welcome to Mr. C's Biology. Today we are talking about natural selection. So, in this forest there are a couple of types of moth. They're both peppered moths, but some of them are a little bit whiter and some of them are a little bit darker. Now, this tree is a quite a pale tree, it's a pale coloured tree, and so the lighter coloured um, peppered moths are able to blend in with the, the um, pale tree, and so they're less likely to stand out. And so if a bird was to come along and to try and look for um, some peppered moths to eat, then it would be more likely to spot the darker ones because they'd stand out against the white tree. Um, now, this is one example of how camouflage works, and but it means that there's some variation here. There's some different types of moths, and one of them's got an advantage, the one that blends in better. And so the one that blends in better is going to survive more, and that means that also the, they're going to be able to reproduce more, they're going to be able to have more white moth babies, and they're going to be able to be a higher proportion of uh, whiter rapid moths in this population. Now, imagine there's a factory that opens nearby. This happened in the Industrial Revolution, and um, a lot of smoke and smog is released from the factory. Now, um, in the Industrial Revolution, this meant that a lot of the trees that were pale um, got caught up in the smoke and the smog and became a lot darker. Now, which one has the advantage? Well, the peppered moths that are a little bit more dark, I have a few more spots that are, are a darker colour, they blend in more. And so suddenly these there's still variation, there's still a little bit of difference in amongst the individuals in the population, same way there's variation between different human beings. And these ones suddenly have a disadvantage and these ones suddenly have an advantage. And so the birds will be able to um, see the whiter ones and not see so well the darker ones. And so they're going to have an advantage. And so the darker moths are going to be able to reproduce more. They're going to be able to um, have more darker moth babies. And there's going to be a higher proportion of darker peppered moths in the population. This is a classic example of natural selection. And these are the kind of main steps that it happens every time natural selection happens. There is first, there has to be variation in the population. If the population is all the same, then it doesn't really matter if uh, they, they die or they, they live because there's, they're all the same. If there's variation, then some of them will have an advantage and some of them won't. Um, if they have an advantage, they're going to be able to survive and reproduce more. And if they survive and reproduce more, that means that the characteristics that they have um, in this case, whether they're slightly lighter or slightly darker, um, they're going to be passed on more to the next generation. And if they're passed on next, to the next generation more, then the whole population, in this case of moths, has the advantage more. This happens uh, a lot, and it's um, a, a classic example of the survival of the fittest, the natural selection and uh, the way of uh, organisms changing as uh, a population as a whole. Just to be really clear, it's not that one moth became a little bit, you know, decided to grow a few more spots or put a bit of soot to make itself darker, that would be an environmental variation. And so it wouldn't be able to be passed on to the next generation. What it is about having some variation, which is inherited variation, and so different, um, different coloured moths that can be inherited and can be passed on, and so the advantage can be passed on. Hope that's clear. Hope that makes sense for natural selection. See you next time. If you've got any questions, don't forget to add them in the comments below.